Um, this is just um, a quick summary of what we've covered so far. We started with um, assignment for classes. Uh, uh, you can assign one variable to another if it's uh, going up the uh, tree. Uh, the hierarchy of um, classes, it's, uh, it's no problem if it's going down. You're going to need to put um, a cast in front and that will cause a runtime. Uh, you get a runtime check would have to be done. Um, that's basically straightforward if you're assigning one uh, thing to another. Uh, if there's an interface involved, you've got to make sure it, in, it implements it. Um, again, pretty much what you'd expect, really. Uh, next, we had a uh, look at the whole thing again using uh, um, from a different perspective, just taking a look at it from a uh, um, diagram to show what's going on. Basically, it's uh, all fairly straightforward. If you keep this in mind, you, you won't go far wrong. We'll ensure that um, variables um, of type T can never refer to anything outside of that range, and simply for A and so on. If you bear that in mind, you, know, you won't go far wrong. Uh, next, we talked about declaring array variables, and um, arrays always start at uh, zero. That's an important thing to note. Um, you only have um, arrays in Java if you want to. Two dimensional arrays you use arrays of arrays basically in the doesn't matter what side these are on, but by convention they normally go on the left. Um, other than that it's uh, fairly straightforward. You can have up to 255 dimensions. Not much use for anything that high of course. Uh, next we talked about uh, creating arrays and um, uh, the uh, size is um, is declared when the array is created. That's where you specify the size of the array. Um, you can use any expression which uh, uh, will generate a positive integer. Um, also talked a bit about um, arrays of uh, zero length. They're not of much use, but um, they do have some consequences. They're not often documented very much in the literature. Um, if you've got any gaps, of course, they have to be on the right-hand side, not the left, like this. And um, here we've got a picture of um, what's happening at each stage, A, B, and C at each stage, what, uh, what gets generated. And uh, here's an example there for the whole of that. Uh, just to make it a bit clearer, these pictures hopefully will make it easier to understand what's happening. Um, next, we talked about accessing array elements, and um, uh, you can supply any uh, anything that can be widened to an integer or an integer. In fact, uh, you can't use uh, longs um, unless, of course, you uh, cast them. Um, uh, don't forget that uh, arrays start from zero. And um, zero uh, length dimensions have got some consequences. That uh, means that nothing gets created after the zero, but uh, stuff before does. Other than that, it's uh, fairly straightforward. You don't often see much about this mentioned in any. I've never seen it mentioned in any textbook, um, but it's a fact. Uh, next, we talked about assigning arrays, and um, it works just like um, assigning from one class to another, basically. So it's uh, fairly simple. Uh, nothing too difficult about it, really. Um, next, we talked about assigning arrays where the uh, array type was a, a primitive type, and um, basically you can't. Um, oh, by the way, if, if the number of dimensions is different, uh, they're incompatible as well. Um, you can uh, set any reference type to null. Uh, it just means it doesn't refer to anything, so that's very straightforward. Um, also, um, objects know what their type is, so you can't get round it. Even if you can get it past the compiler, it won't uh, it won't help you. It'll be trapped at runtime. Uh, and then we talked about initialization of arrays. Um, with an array initializer like that, uh, 
uh, you have to have that uh, semicolon in. That's uh, an exception to the rule that you don't generally need a semicolon after a right curly bracket. You do in that case. Uh, you can have a single trailing comma, no more than one. So you can have one at the end of each of these uh, initializers. One there, uh, one there, for instance. Um, uh, that's an array of uh, length zero, as you might expect. Um, you can have expressions in there, and um, you can't use an array initializer unless it's part of the declaration statement. Uh, next, we talked about anonymous arrays, and um, I think these were added to the Java specification after array initializers. So I suspect had they been the other way around, we wouldn't have um, had array initializers. You'd be using this, which is, in my opinion, more sensible semantically, no, syntactically. <laughs> That's what I mean. Um, yeah, I prefer these actually. There's no difference in, in uh, the code that gets generated, it's just the same. Uh, next, we talked about um, a public final field that's in every array called length. Um, and I gave a nice, uh, tortuous looking example. Um, and uh, I'll just point, to point out that. Uh, if you have a, a zero length dimension, it's got some consequences. You can't obtain the length of that one beyond that point. Uh, next, we talked about this uh, clone method, which uh, every array has got, um, and uh, it copies the array basically. And if it's a multi dimensional array, only the first dimension is copied. Um, if you get uh, an error message here, generated by the compiler, um, it refers to a particular type, you can look up what it means if you know this uh, table here, it's straightforward.